Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere. This is the final entry in the PlayStation trilogy of Ace Combat games. As usual, it was developed and published by Namco and released in May of 1999. It's still an air combat game, although there is a small shift towards simulation. But I'll come back to that later. Unlike its predecessors, Ace Combat 3's story is more fleshed out than some barebones context. The year is 2040 and two mega corporations, General Resources and Neuwerk, have superseded traditional governments and are now at each other's throat to gain total economic domination. You play as an agent of the Universal Peace Enforcement Organization, or UPO, whose goal, as the name implies, is to prevent conflicts between the two superpowers. In practice, this means you'll take part in aerial operations to cripple the activities of both parties. One thing that immediately struck me is how much style the game has compared to its predecessors. This one really feels like it has its own identity in contrast to the previous minimalist approaches. Just compare the difficulty select screens of Ace Combat 2 and 3. Now, I'm not making this comment to rag on AC1 and 2. Those had interfaces which did their job adequately. Plus, it would be simply unfair since AC3 is the culmination of 4 years of experience, but this is definitely a step up which makes the game more memorable. The game consists of a linear series of missions which is a bit of a downgrade from a previous game which had small branching paths. On the other hand, this one has an increased 36 missions which are more varied and interesting, so I'm happier with that. Since you no longer play as a mercenary pilot, the currency system was stripped from the game. Instead, the game gives you a new play in every few missions, and you can unlock even more by playing well. You might remember in my last two reviews that I complained there was no real incentive to kill more targets to make more money. Well, I'm happy to report that AC3 uses a grading system, and if you get an A or a B in certain missions, you unlock bonus planes. In most cases, getting these grades requires killing a fair amount of optional target, which encourages the player to try harder, which I like. The only blemish in this system is that the grade requirements aren't told to the player, so if you finish a mission too soon, you might end with a C grade and you need to reload your save to try again. Honestly, I wouldn't blame anyone for looking up the requirements to save some tedium. Also, as a consequence of money being gone from the game, there is now no penalty whatsoever for crashing or failing. All it does is increase your death counter in the main menu, but that doesn't matter to me. The wingman system is gone as well. The game now gives the player an ally plane only in certain missions with no control over it. But, at long last, allies are now pretty useful. They can down enemy planes fairly decently. I just wish the player had a bit more involvement over them, but this is an improvement. As I mentioned earlier, the mission list is the best yet. Although many of these are still about shooting air and ground targets, the game has the player do fairly unique stuff at times, and I won't say more to avoid spoiling the discovery. Even the traditional target hunting missions are a bit more interesting to go through thanks to the stronger plot. They're also greater in scope, as a lot of them have multiple objectives in a row. The fuel system from previous games was removed in favor of an actual timer for most missions. I really like how the timer is integrated in missions because in most cases, being too slow doesn't mean you'll get a game over, but instead that you'll receive harder, extra objectives. For example, one mission has you shoot cargo planes and if you take too much time, they will release the fighter jets they're carrying, and then you'll have to destroy those as well. It provides extra challenge in an organic way, which is great. A new addition that will become a staple of the franchise is the ability to choose between multiple weapons. From short-range, fast-firing missiles to MIRVs, each plane has its own selection of rockets and machine guns with some of those being totally unique and taking advantage of the futuristic setting. That lets the player have a more unique experience, which is always a plus. Speaking of which, the game features 21 pilotable jets. That's a bit less than the previous game, but all of the models here are original and diverse in abilities, which makes for a stronger selection overall. I especially like the spacecraft look of Neuwerk planes. So what about actually controlling them? Well, once again, there's a heap of improvements on that front. As usual, you have the 4 degrees of freedom and an easy control mode that you really shouldn't use. The most massive gameplay upgrade is the ability, at long last, to rotate the camera. This makes reading the action significantly easier and you can even track your target. Beyond that, a small tweak that has tangible consequences, and also something unique to 3 in the Ace Combat franchise, is that planes now have momentum. 
In other entries, you can dive, then set your plane straight at Mach 2 at a mere 500 meters above the ground, no problem. But here, even if you set your plane straight, you're still gonna carry downwards momentum, which is going to sling you into the ground. As such, maneuvers require more finesse when close to surfaces. It can be jarring at first, but I like that it makes piloting more engaging. With that said, Ace Combat 3 is still a largely arcade experience that can be picked up by anyone. It's all about executing maneuvers to line up with enemies and missile them down, much like actual dogfights, but with a lot of variables removed from the equation for the sake of accessibility. A small grievance I have is that the game displays a message at the center of the screen whenever you get a kill, which obscures the view and is a bit annoying. On normal, the AI isn't super aggressive, but you also can't get into fights mindlessly. I think the game is balanced well enough. A small letdown is the removal of the Ace Fighter system from Ace Combat 2. Although the game now has the equivalent of boss fights in some levels, I would have liked tougher special enemies in the rest of the game to make things even more exciting. That new camera system lets the player appreciate the graphical improvements. Bodies of water cast reflections, the missions showcase different weathers and times of day, engines create heat haze, etc. Ace Combat 2 already looked nice and this one is even better with all the tweaks and additions to the visuals. There isn't much to say on the audio front. The sound effects and the soundtrack are fittingly futuristic and electronic sounding, but none of the tracks really stood out to me, with the exception of the one in the final level of the game, which I found pretty eerie. I mentioned the story a few times so far, and as I've said previously, it's stronger than in the last entries. The narration is delivered periodically through blocks of text at the beginning or end of certain missions. It describes the escalation of the ongoing conflict and displays a couple of nice twists along the way. It's nothing too crazy though, it doesn't feel weaved into the gameplay except for the final stretch of the game. The story still feels like it's just there to have some form of context for the missions, which I think is unfortunate because it likely touches on themes that could have been expanded upon. The way it's implemented feels a bit tacked on too, with the cheap looking info dumps that clash with the game's aesthetic and the complete lack of voice acting. Even the briefings don't have any, which is a downgrade from Ace Combat 2. Again though, I appreciate that it's there as the added plot gives more motivation to see the game through. In conclusion then, Ace Combat 3 marks yet another step up in the franchise formula. While it isn't perfect, it's certainly a very good game and the culmination of what can be achieved for a dogfighting game on PlayStation. At this point, you'd expect I'd be done with this review. But things are not so simple, for you see, there exists two versions of Ace Combat 3. The international release, which I've just reviewed, and the original Japanese version. That one is vastly different, so let's talk about it. Simply going by the intro of the original release, you can tell it's a whole different matter. This one has a focus on named, animated characters, which is a shadow of what's to come. The structure of the game is quite different. The first thing you do is create a name profile which contains 6 safe slots that you're going to make use of. You select a difficulty level and, surprise, the first thing you're shown is a voice cutscene. It has 2D animations and fancy CGs, especially when compared to previous entries. This cutscene and the voice mails afterwards establish the game's world. It's still about the conflict between General Resources and Noicom. Yeah, they were in Neuwerk in the OG. Once again, you're a new recruit to UPO's Air Division. I complained about the lack of voice acting in the international version, but it's all accounted for here, including voice briefings. Although the actual gameplay is the exact same in both versions, this one has radio chatter from your allies, who are present in nearly every mission. That's another staple of the franchise that originated with this game. There is a grand total of 52 missions in the game, but you won't see them all in one playthrough. I mentioned structural differences and you'll encounter the biggest one early on. The game has branching paths. And not merely choosing a mission or another. These are big decisions that will send you in completely different directions for the rest of the playthrough. 
The variety and significance in paths you can take puts most modern RPGs to shame, and this game is not even in a genre where people usually think about the plot to begin with. Admittedly, a playthrough of this game is minuscule in comparison to said RPGs, but it's still quite daring in what it lets the player do. The 36 missions of the international release are a combination of missions from every path, and I would say that they pick the most interesting ones of the game, so not all is lost. To reiterate, although it's stronger than in previous entries, the plot in AC3 International is still very largely in the background. But that's absolutely not the case in the OG. I would go as far as to say that you spend as much time flying as you do listening to other characters. In between every mission you receive voicemails from your allies, or you watch a news report, or a cutscene. The game goes through great lengths to establish the events occurring in the characters around you. And if cutscenes are not enough, the game has a new menu where you can get info on just about everything that gets mentioned. And all of this for what, you might wonder? Well, you may remember that I mentioned how the international version only briefly flirted with various themes. This is where that potential gets realized, and then some. I want to say as little as I can so you can discover it all for yourself. So, I'll just note that employing production IG, who is responsible for animating the 1995 Ghost in the Shell movie, was a conscious decision. I very strongly recommend playing through every single path the game has to offer. Not only because all of it is good, but also because they all bring new pieces to the puzzle of the overarching plot, and you'll get an extra ending after you beat the final branch. My advice is to save after every mission, then use a new save slot after every decision you make, so you can quickly jump back after you're done with one playthrough. In total, the process should take 6 or 7 hours, which places the game among the longer entries in the franchise. So you might be wondering why all of the footage you've been looking at for a few minutes has been in English. The answer is that Ace Combat fans seemingly care more about the game than Namco themselves do. Since 1999, the original version has never seen an English translated re-release. And so, a group of immensely talented and dedicated fans took the matter in their own hands to translate the entire game and release the translation patch for free. The Undertaking, dubbed Project Nemo, leads us to where we are today. You can play through every single mission of the game with English text. The translation of the second disc was released on the 14th of December 2016. That means until about two years ago, unless you spoke Japanese, there was no way to experience the full original game. But the work is not quite done yet. Mostly, there remains plenty of information files to translate and crashes to iron out. Don't worry though, the crashes don't concern the main game. I'm happy to say that the project is still alive. Unfortunately, since it's being worked on in the free time of volunteers, there is no ETA for the next patch. In my opinion, it's not critical to wait for it. What is translated is sufficient to get through the entire game, after all. Once you have a Japanese copy of AC3, you can head over to the Project Nemo website and grab the patch. The archive contains instructions on how to apply it to your dumb discs. And then, off you go. As to what happened during the game's localization process, the best we can speculate is that, because Ace Combat 3 was the worst selling entry thus far in Japan, Namco decided to cut short the localization funding, meaning there was simply no way to translate, let alone dub, the entire story. And so, the translation team had to ask near everything related to characters or the story to keep a very simple version of it. That makes sense, of course, but I find it unfortunate that in almost 20 years Namco hasn't decided to give Ace Combat 3 another shot. And that's all I've got for both main versions of Ace Combat 3. As I've hopefully convinced you of, if you're going to play it, you should really try to go for the patched Japanese version. Although the international release is still a notch above its predecessor, it would be a shame to miss out on the fairly unique experience the original has to offer.